Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is video True Nerd, and welcome back to Fallout New Vegas with the worst courier. Well, last time, we got ourselves a hell of a lot of money, a lot of XP, and some really, really damn good guns as well. God love Pew Pew, lovely weapon, ridiculously powerful, and useless Steve can actually use the darn thing, which is always welcome to. So, today, we're going to be turning our attention back to the main plot, though, uh, naturally... We're going to be doing it in a slightly sideways way. So here we are back at the strip. Naturally you have to come at night because at night it's just flipping gorgeous. And we're going to be taking care of Benny. Which is also a very easy source of XP because literally just walk inside, see the guy, you get yourself a big old pile of XP. But that's kind of, you know, a main quest. So I felt like it wasn't really worth pointing out last week. And speak of the devil, if I just take a few more steps in this direction, Benny will start coming down the steps, and I'll get myself all the XP in the world. Marvellous. Now, naturally, there's a million ways to deal with Benny. The one that's most famous and by far the easiest is, bring a female character, take Black Widow, speak to him, seduce him, kill him in his sleep. Absolutely lovely. Alternatively, swank around over here if you've got the three bits of evidence, the cigarette butt, the note from Novak, and the cigarette lighter. He'll be totally on side, letting you isolate Benny in his room, or speech of 45, do precisely the same thing. To be precise, 15, 30, then 45, there's three separate checks. But, 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 that's not particularly interesting. Instead, I want to show the secret room that's in this casino. I think I might have actually shown this on the channel once before, many years ago, possibly entirely by accident. I'm not sure I fully understood the mechanics back then. But now, hey, now I do. And I don't mean the secret room with Yes Man, I mean the secret room behind the secret room, because there's a permanently locked elevator. But there is a way to get in there without actually cheating using console commands or whatnot, because... What that's for is it's Benny's escape route. It's how he escapes if he manages to hoodwink you and thus escape the casino. So when Benny starts making a run towards it, it will open. When he gets to it, it'll close. But they made a small mistake, which is they forgot to actually put a check in as to whether Benny was still alive. So if you kill him while he's trying to run to it, it stays open. Though if you can just beat him there, that works too. I'm going to try and do that if I can. Because, you know, letting Benny escape, that just strikes me as the useless Steve way. Now, the way we do that, however, is very precise. So first up, without speaking to Swank, because we want Benny right here on the casino floor, we need to speak to him and get him into the presidential suite. Though I should stress that useless Steve needs to do this entire conversation in leopard print pyjamas, which is just perfect. Here we go, speech of 60. So, me and him need to go to the presidential together right now. I believe this is the only room this will work in. So, we've now got ourselves one isolated Benny. And all we need to do now is be the bigger person and forgive him for shooting us in the head. So hello over there, Benny. Now that you and me's got some privacy, I gotta ask, how is it that you're still living? Really good doctor in Good Springs. Here we go. Once he starts trying to con you, all you need to do is say, forget it, I forgive you. Me and you, Benny, we're cool. You forgive me? After what I've done? Baby, are you trying to make me cry? I don't know what to say. Words don't begin. The least I can do is copy the presidential for as long as you want it. This spirit of forgiveness you're showing me. It's enough to make a player rethink what it means to win. You're 18 carat, baby, all the way. He is now going to attempt to flee the casino. So we are now in a race with Benny. His elevator is now unlocked. Here we go, you need to get your timing just right because sometimes he'll despawn, but if you go through the elevator at just the right moment, you can start racing Benny. Now, if I were to kill him right now, that'd be good enough, the elevator would stay open, but let's keep him alive, damn it. So we've just got to deal with the fact that I can outrun him because he stops to open doors. And now if we just get around, oh, he might have already almost got past me there, but don't worry about which him. This elevator is now open. Which is absolutely flippy beautiful. You cannot get down here normally. And the game starts getting very confused. You may have noticed I just got myself, uh, yeah, a sub-objective that, uh, that doesn't exist. The game doesn't really uh, know what to do right now. So yes, this here is Benny's secret escape route. Which you are not normally allowed into. You're not really supposed to find your way into here. But 
Somebody put a lot of work into it because it makes sense. This here is the basement. What have we got over here? We've got ourselves an explosives crate because naturally he had to blow his way down into some tunnels. Including actually a pulse mine. Now that, that's pretty useful potentially. We might well be getting some use out of that later. And as for what he managed to actually blow his way into, naturally this is the basement of Vault 21. And there we go, Benny has now officially managed to escape, presumably, so ring-a-ding-ding -ding has just been completed. So yeah, I was just down here in the basement, the game got itself a bit confused for a second, but eventually just declared, you know what, I guess Benny's just sort of gone, that's fine, we'll catch up with him later. Right, so, 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 lockpick. Get that up to 40, so a locksmith's reader, that's 50. That'd be pretty darn good, all things considered. What else do I need for today? I think we're good for the time being. So, in which case, energy weapons 54. Now that's getting somewhere. There's not really much down here, by the way. There's one door you can force open, but there's nothing behind it but a void, where if you leap into it, you will actually travel to Vault 21. So just to prove this is supposed to be part of Vault 21. But it's very elegant, because, you know, it makes sense. There is a vault next door to the top. So if Benny were to dig down, potentially he would find his way down into this basement, which is really cool. So yeah, that's his emergency escape plan, which I think is, well, it's just a testament to the level of thought and love that was put into this game. It's marvellous. So, naturally, while we're here, we can just actually catch up with Yes Man, trigger all of that nonsense. So, going for all of his dialogue options activates change in management. So, we'll be needing to be having a bit of a look -see at that. So, here we go. Recover Platinum Chip from Benny at the Fort. Kill or disable Mr. House. Absolutely lovely. And speaking of Mr. House, that's my next destination today. If for no other reason, then I quite enjoy Mr. House chewing you out for being incompetent enough to let Benny get away. Events have transpired in a less than optimal fashion. Benny has fled the strip and the platinum chip has not been recovered. And yes indeed, Mr. House, would you believe he actually lied to me? And whose idea was it to offer yourself up as a sacrificial lamb? Really, what did you expect? Are you going to keep giving him opportunities to kill you? It's becoming a hobby of his. I'm gonna be honest, House. This one's actually kind of on you. You're the person who decided to hire a complete and total idiot to go and get the chip back in the first place. Doing it in this order does also mean, yes, you actually have House Always Wins 1 and House Always Wins 2 active simultaneously. Because you can activate House Always Wins 2 by speaking to him now, but 1 won't complete until you actually get the chip. But screw all of that nonsense, we're just gonna kill House right now anyway. But John, I hear you cry. You can't do that. The only way to get into House's little back area to kill him is either be holding the platinum chip that gives you access automatically, or crack a hard terminal, which useless Steve most certainly can't do. Well, actually, there we flip it going. In fact, actually, I've just learned something. I had no idea if you interacted with this terminal when you can't use it, that the game would actually prompt me to go and get the only other item that can, the Lucky 38 keycard. Though the game's not nice enough to actually uh, add that onto the map. You just need to figure that one out for yourself. So, let's go and find ourselves a couple of them. Ah, and speak of the devil, hello there, Emily. Excuse me, but are you the courier who caused all of that trouble in the tops? So, this here is Emily Ortle, and she's got a very curious quest for me. A really fun quest that kind of meshes into all this stuff I'm talking about right now. Quite simply, she wants to bug Mr. House's network. Here, take this packet sniffer. It'll allow us to intercept data on Mr. House's network. You might have to manually remove the encryption from his data network, but hopefully you won't have too much trouble. Good luck. So as the voice line indicates there, this quest sounds like it's going to be a bit on the complicated side. Instead, literally, you just go inside, go upstairs from the main casino floor, hop over the bar, terminal right here that is locked to hub. You don't even need to bother opening it, just bug the network, and that's it. 50 XP for doing that immediately. Then you just go and speak to her, job's done. Now, you may have noticed she did specifically mention, hey, you might need to debug the network or something, 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 but no. No, you don't, because this quest was supposed to be a lot bigger than it ended up being. 
It looks like we've started getting reports from the tower's network. I'm sure the others will be able to make some sense of this. Oh, what the hell? The bug went offline. Damn it! I swear to God that old man has thought of everything. Well, it looks like this was all for nothing. But you did your best. I appreciate the help. There we go. Now accepted by followers of the apocalypse. That is the only way this mission can end. But originally, that's not how it went. Oh, and I've been proved a liar, actually. The world map in the quest has indeed updated to straight up point you in the direction of the VIP key cards. Well, marvellous. Okay. I thought that was way better hidden than it turns out to be. But it's still a fun location, so screw it. We're going anyway. Here we go. Just outside North Vegas Square, we have got ourselves the H&H Tool Company. Belonging to... Oh. Hello over there. Right, yes, I see you. Also, please stop tossing grenades at me. That's quite frankly... Never mind, I'll sort that out in a second. Oh yeah, I'm still wearing pyjamas. I should probably take those off at this point. You see, originally this whole process of speaking to Emily and bugging the network and getting into Mr. House was supposed to be a much longer, more complicated process involving digging into Mr. House's backstory a bit. And this is a part of that. H, H tools belonging to the house family, but not to Mr. House. Instead, it belongs to his half-brother, Anthony. And you've got to really watch your step in this place, because uh, by the end, Anthony went um, a little bit off the deep end. So the whole thing is bugged. Like, really bugged. So many traps everywhere, and I can't remember where all of them are. So this is... This is going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay, right up to the point where I explode. Here we go. We got ourselves some crazed Mr. Handies. But fortunately, yeah, they're handies, uh, nothing more, which isn't too bad, all things considered. I might even get myself a flipping sneak attack there, and you've just melted. Uh, there's going to be... Oh, yep, more coming yet. I think someone just walked into a trap. Fortunately, the handies can trigger the traps themselves, which I'm pretty sure is what just happened there. So, yeah, we got ourselves crazed Mr. Handies uh, that are just trying to kill everything, together with uh, mines. Uh, and we can just grab all of that. Lovely. Is that a... Uh, hang on. Lights on here. Keep an eye out for tripwires. Yep, thought so. And uh, repair of 22. I don't have repair of 22. Uh, okay. How bad is the, uh, the repair right now? Okay, so, um, even if I actually did a repair magazine, that wouldn't be good enough. Good! Good, 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 good. Everything, everything's, everything's fine. Uh, okay, what's my, what's my cheapest weapon? I think you can... Can you shoot up? Not without ammo, you can't. Okay, this is fine, because I've got grenades. So, if I just use grenades to detonate all of the traps, that should do the job right there. Marvellous. Oh, that was just a shotgun trap anyway. Those aren't dangerous. So, yeah, we got ourselves a whole bunch of emails here. A really fun conversation, actually. Because step one, Anthony House slowly starts to go a little bit on the, uh eccentric side. So, cameras, uh, forbidden. Employees weren't allowed to actually gather in the break room together. He was scared of people talking. And also, bathrooms were sealed off and walled over. So you weren't allowed to go to the bathroom anymore. And on top of that, the other Mr. House decided to implement, yes, random DNA screenings to isolate the traitor gene. Which I'm sure is definitely real science. And later on, employees had to also submit, yes, every single payday, one vial of blood, 20 nail clippings, toenail or fingernail is fine, but not a mix of both, one lock of hair, or a five square centimetre skin sample. These samples will be retained for monitoring purposes. So yes, bit of an uh, interesting place to work. And also on top of that, he was suspicious of, yes indeed, foreigners, masons, carpenters, tragic players, bit of a shout out to our Fallout 2 there, illegal aliens, extraterrestrials, or the Flemish for some reason. Watch out for these turrets, by the way. They don't have that much health, but they will, uh, they'll hurt you. They'll definitely hurt you. But yeah, these are just Mark IIs because they are tied to level. So that's not too bad. Just hide over there. You're a Mark IV, which is, yep, a bit more dangerous, but nothing too bad, actually. Just step around the corner, fire, step straight back in. We should be able to take you out. No problem whatsoever. 
Is that all your lot? Yep, I think that's your lot right there. And on another terminal, we can find out that, yeah, H&H &H Tools started running into trouble because Robco started going after their market. Did Mr. H run over Robco's dog or something? No, but Robco is in fact run by the more traditional, well-known Mr. House. And as for the relationship between Mr. House and his brother, we'll be getting into why that soured in a moment. Also, some of the employees were involved in some, uh, yes, interesting sexual behaviour. Stovepipe hat and a souvenir moon rock is apparently what they were uh, into, which is uh, of interest. It's not a massive area, mind. You've just got, yeah, a handful of robo-brains. Nothing major here. Maybe watch out for, you know, uh, the mines on the steps and whatnot. While keeping an eye out for more turrets. There's definitely... Uh, there's definitely more turrets somewhere. Where are the rest of the turrets? I'm getting suspicious now. I know there's more... There's more turrets somewhere. Okay. Just, you know, help yourself to more mines. It's a good source of mines, quite frankly. But there's... There's definitely more here somewhere. Hang on. Okay, well, step one. I do see another tripwire over there. So just trigger that. Lovely. And... I could have sworn there were more turrets, but maybe we'll get to them in time, I'm not sure. Right, so, we have got ourselves uh, the office, here we go. Anthony House's Terminal, which I can't actually, um, can't actually open. Right, that's unfortunate. Also, on top of that, um, his personal VIP card is supposed to be right here. But it seems to have sort of, um... Yeah, cease to exist. Possibly the grenade blasted it out. Hang on. Just, um, let's, let's try this again. There we go. I can see it right there. So this time I'm just gonna jump. Never mind, I've just been shot. It's fine. That's it. Right there. One VIP security card. Be flipping beautiful. Now, as for the terminal, fortunately, I know what's on it anyway. Basically, Anthony House slowly going insane, but perhaps the most interesting bit, that's never really overtly stated, but uh, the final entry, before he, you know, authorises the robots to start killing his own staff, is Cindy Lou was right, they've all turned on me. Cindy Lou, of course, being mentioned in all of these various terminals as the person who was working for HR, who also sent out all of these requests for blood samples, skin samples, all of that business. So while it's never explicitly stated, I would like to posit that yes, despite the fact he thought everybody might be a spy and be betraying him, and the one person he trusted was his own assistant, Cindy Lou, who worked in HR, I suspect actually she might have been supposed to be a communist spy who was getting a lot of very helpful information out of this company, and finally, to cover her tracks, persuaded her boss to kill all of the other employees. I can't prove it, but it strikes me as a very neat theory. And even though we can't access that terminal, we do actually have some other mad ravings, because yes, and all the terminals marked as uh, suspicious, we can access a lovely hidden network drive. So here we go. Stay out, you red menace. Cindy Lou can no longer save me. So these aren't just little fragments of a hidden journal belonging to Anthony House. Other such notes include the word nevertheless, over and over forever, some mad gibbering about no more haircuts, no more trims, because they were going to steal his thought energy by cutting off his hair, but fortunately, he had a special hat and a special shotgun. Tragically though, you can't actually access any form of special hat in this game. Truly sad. And yes, a mention of father, why have you stopped talking to me? You always loved him best. So yeah, the House Brothers, definitely a bit of tension there. And the final and perhaps most telling note, it's worse than I feared. Henderson sent a 10-point memo outlining the benefits of mechanization and automation as if I wouldn't know he's been plotting with my half-brother the entire time. Because yes, indeed, Robco producing robots looking to take over the entire workforce. I knew he was a weasel dick traitor from the moment I laid eyes on him. Only one thing to do, one thing, and the company and my father's legacy is safe forever. Cindy Lou will bring him to me, and then I'll make an example. The bastard will learn why you don't cross house.
But aside from those fun notes, there's also one other thing on this terminal, which is, if you can access it, there's a special option, which is the Lucky 38 Executive Override. In the base game, it does literally nothing, but it was supposed to be part of Emily's quest, The Moon Comes Over the Tower. Because yes, that quest is just suspiciously easy, because most of it was cut out. You were supposed to have to plant the bug, but then do the overrides, potentially with a better reward and a better chance of success, or getting more information over to the followers, if you did more overrides, because some of them were hidden behind skill checks, like right here, with signs of 50. Luckily I can show off that option I believe, because yes, there's a much easier solution rather than just going to uh, the H&H &H Tool Factory. And that's coming right here, to Camp Golf. Okay, this terminal is also locked, easy, but you says Steve still can't do that, but you can. Alright, it's right flipping there, and more importantly, we have got ourselves VIP keycard number two. That one's just sitting out in the middle of nowhere, don't need to fight your way past anything, you can literally just walk in here, even if you're neutral with the NCR, no trouble whatsoever. Okay, there's one more I know for certain is around here. New Vegas Steel, though it may well be locked away beyond use of Steve's capabilities. Also, keep out the pulse rifle because, uh, yeah, this place is, uh, full of uh, gutsies, actually. Which is not, not fun. Not fun at all, but that's fine. One bottle cap, it's all worth it already. Alright, I just need to find, is it you over there? Where are the- Oh, yeah, I see. Actually, your handies. I thought you were always gutsies. But okay, that's all absolutely fine. Here we go, please. Please tell me. There we go. That's it. I told you it was real. I'm not mad. Lucky 38, executive override. Now that, that's right there. That's why this building exists. Because otherwise, New Vegas Steel doesn't really- uh, do anything. Neither does the H&H &H Tools Factory, neither for the most part does the sewers, which also has one of these terminals in it. This quest, or rather this quest that used to exist but now exists in a much more truncated form, this explains why a bunch of buildings in New Vegas are there, even though it kind of feels like they don't do anything. So I think that's quite interesting. And oh yeah, they've got plasma. They've got plasma. Still, we're just going to be, excuse me. Yeah, Thought Pulse might work pretty well. Then again, maybe don't uh, hang around for too long. Because, you know, it's it's never good to be shot by Plasma. Might just go and grab some lovely, lovely energy stuff. That's flame. That's energy, but mostly flame. That's that's also flame. Right, maybe we should just go, actually. Before the actual gutsy show up. Because, uh, yeah, don't want to be shot by Plasma. That's going to be painful. Now, with that in hand, we could go and deal with Mr. House. But when Mr. House dies, someone much more important disappears too. Jane, the robot who buys the snow globe. So, before we put old Housey in the ground, back to Nellis to grab the boomer snow globe from the museum at the end here. There we go, beautiful. Take a quick stroll up the road from Boulder City just to go and visit Hoover Dam. Here we go, right to the front of the visitor centre. No, no, let's actually have a little look -see at it. There we go, Hoover Dam Snow Globe. And back on the strip itself, Vault 21. Now, unfortunately, Sarah's Snow Globe is trapped behind an average locked door, but I'm pretty sure... Okay, you were in a good position a second ago. Please sit right back down. It will be very convenient if you... Okay, Sarah, you're not bloody cooperating right now. Here we go, just grab that, nice and easy to steal, not planning to, you know, do anything like rob or other money or anything. And with that, we can get what we need. I know with speech of 75 you can seduce her as well, but even so, she won't actually take you to her room until you've done her quest, gathering vault suits, which is uh, surprisingly tricky. There's not that many vault suits floating around, so uh, yeah, that would have taken a while. Much easier just to steal the password. So, into her room, which is, yeah, if you just turn left the moment you enter the vault, down over here in the corner, and one final snow globe. When I say final, final in the base game, that's all of the base game ones. There are more in the DLC, but that'll do for now. So, step one, swap all of those out with Jane. 6,000 bottle caps, love it. And now we can just activate this here terminal, thanks to that card. Marvellous. So you don't need the chip, you don't need Science of 75, that card will do just fine. Now admittedly, I'm about to start getting shot a lot, but that's all absolutely fine, because I should be able to take it with the combat armour on, unlock that, 
absolutely love early. And in we go. Job done. Robots won't follow you in here. So, uh, hello there, Mr. House. And... Okay, I was a bit worried by the music there for a second, but it's fine. They haven't followed me. They can't do that. No matter how many times I see it, I will never be comfortable with Mr. House's weird penis pump thing. And the fact it's got physics. So when he's coming out of his tube, it sort of wiggles. I don't like that. I just don't like it. Why have you done this? Centuries of preparation. So much good undone. I'm going to be honest, it was primarily so I could manipulate the behaviour of one of the companions in this game, but that's not actually an option, so sorry about that. No need to kill him, mind. We'll just be, yes, disabling the interface. There we go. And you can just stay here as my pet. Marvelous. And that auto-generates the transmission of his obituary. Which does actually provide, yes, a little bit of further detail on the story we've been seeing so far. So obviously, as he does tell you, when you first meet him and ask who he is, he was indeed the head of Robco. That's why Robco was gunning for H&H. &H. And just scroll down a bit. Orphaned at an early age when his parents died in a freak accident, Auto Gyro Lightning, he was cheated of his inheritance but nonetheless went on to found Robco, which went on to gun for H&H &H Tool. So uh, while it doesn't specifically say that Anthony House cheated Robert House out of his inheritance, we can reasonably put two and two together. So that's House disconnected. Time to find a new occupant for that computer. Yeah, sure, you'll do. But my real objective now is, yes indeed, to manipulate one of my companions to give me something I really, really want. And that companion is Arcade Ganon. Now normally, you'd need speech higher than I've got to get him on side. But fortunately, I've got an ace up my sleeve. Here we go. I may not have the speech that he wants me to have, but if you've got low enough intelligence, Arcade just straight up takes pity on you. Hmm. Wow. You sound like you really do need some help. Look, I can help you out, but you can't do anything stupid. <clears throat> I mean, you can't help bad people uh, who want to hurt the locals in Freeside. If you do, I'll leave. Does that make sense? I love how he tries to speak to you in a way you'll understand as an idiot. That's, that's just marvellous. You know what? Sure, let's be friends, Arcade. All right, let's not waste any time. And he gives you the better healing poke, which is actually really, really damn good because, uh, yeah, I am still a bit soft and squishy because I'm lacking in hit points. So let's talk about Arcade Ganon and his special mission because it's a bit of an unusual one, which is the game basically wants it to activate towards the end of the game. It's supposed to be kind of late game content because its reward is really, really damn good. A suit of armor I most definitely want to get my hands on. And the way the game defines late game is Mr. House is dead. Because if you're going down the NCR route, that is pretty late in the game. The NCR wants you to deal with the kings first, then the boomers. House might be next after that, or possibly you deal with the Khans first. Can't remember the order in For the Republic Part 2. But it's definitely not up first. But, 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 if you want to go down the change in management route, well... Under those circumstances, you can actually get rid of House much earlier on. So, House is already mostly removed, just need to get the chip back to actually complete change in management. And on top of that, Arcade needs to like me, which is actually very easy to do. In fact, I picked him up right now so I could kill two birds with one stone. Because as I say, we need to go to the fort to get the chip back. So Arcade, you're coming with me. Though it does rather amuse me that, uh, yes of course, he did specifically say, Hey, I hate the Legion, don't hurt the locals of Freeside. First thing I do is take him straight to the fort. Unfortunately, Arcade, you don't really get to say, so just ignore the heads on spikes and crucifixions if you can. Wait, wait, wait a second. What's going on? Am I playing Virgil to your Dante? I'd like to assume that we're tiptoeing into the mouth of hell out of academic curiosity, but I'm not so open-minded that I've lost my brains. Yes, unfortunately, sometimes when you arrive at the fort, especially if you're arriving for the first time, because several characters want to speak to you immediately straight away, you sometimes end up sort of, uh, 
inside other characters. So I'm pretty sure I'm currently speaking to Arcade through the ferryman. So basically, he wants to know why I've just brought him to the fort. And what I want to tell him is, let's just listen to him, figure out what he's up to, and get out. That's worth plus two points to my Arcade meter. Short of cancelling our imminent travel plans, that's the best thing you could have said. Just be careful. If we travel at Caesar's pleasure, he may not let us out as easily as he lets us in. He's not kidding. I think I am stuck here for a By while. By order of Kaisar, all visitors must disarm and relinquish all banned items. And you may notice I'm still stuck inside a person, but it's, uh, it's absolutely fine. Everything's okay. There we go. I've managed to get outside of Curse the Lucullus. Absolutely marvelous. So... We need to go and get the chip bag. Though that's going to open up one other fun little possibility. You see, Caesar doesn't want companions in the tent with him. Because, you know, companions are really, really strong. So they could probably just murder him and all of his bodyguards. So what we want to do instead is leave Arcade outside. So, okay, just a little bit further. Here. This will do very nicely. And we've got ourselves a Benny. Marvellous. Hey there, Benny. Okay, can't speak to Benny yet. Got it. Maybe Kaisar first. So I finally get to meet the courier who's accomplished so much in so little time. That's why I summoned you here, right? I mean, a man nearly kills you, and your response is to track him across the breath of the Mojave? You arrive on the strip and waltz into the Lucky 38 like someone left you a key under the doormat. You visit the tops and next thing you know the head of the chairman is fleeing the strip like a whimpering little pup. But the topper, the coup de grace, Mr. House dies while you're visiting him at the Lucky 38. When you set your mind to something, you get results. I like that. The question is, are you ready to get started? I love how Kaisar's introductory speech changes depending on what you've done. Like, if you've done loads to screw over the Legion, he basically subtly threatens you. But on this occasion, he didn't, because for the most part, I've done things he approves of, which is great. So, uh, okay, what do you want me to do first? I can't remember whether it's Benny first or the chip first. Ah, first up is in fact dealing with the chip, but I do get to speak to Benny now. Hi, Benny. Go ahead and laugh, baby. I ain't blind to the humor in this situation. Oh, Benny, I'm sorry it ended up like this, but you're right, it is pretty funny. Yeah, well, laugh it up on your own time. Down to brass tacks. How'd your meet and greet with Baldy go? Oh, it's fine. He gave me the platinum chip. Everything's marvelous. Sure. Baldy wants you to go down there in the bunker and destroy whatever Mr. House stashed there. Oh, you don't want to do that, baby. Whatever's down in that bunker is the key to the city called Vegas. So here's what you do. You go down there and you use the chip to do whatever Mr. House would have wanted you to do. And when you get back to the strip, you find Yes Man. I made it so that cat can't help but be helpful. Dig? This is possibly actually the one instance where Benny's actually genuinely trying to help you. There's no chance he's escaping because there's no way in hell he thinks you're going to help him escape and he doesn't think he's escaping from the Legion by himself. So he's just giving you earnestly good advice for how to take over Vegas by yourself. So uh, I'd like to think at the end of it, maybe Benny actually came to respect you a little bit. Right, weapons back in hand. Activate console. Insert chip. Depressingly tiny, flimsy looking hatch opens. <laughs> it really should open with more of a big clang, clang, clang. Would be better if it was a vault door, damn it. I refuse to admit you couldn't have drilled through that flimsy little thing. Right, down we go into the bunker. Let's go reactivate some robots. Not because we need to, mind. Bear in mind, of course, yes, Mr. House is uh, not actually present. This is his console, but he's gone. So basically, the only quest thing I've got to do is destroy the robots. But it's definitely a better idea to not do it that way. Because if you do, you've got a much nastier fight on your hands on the way out. When uh, this little door that's jammed opens up and sentry bots start flooding the whole area. Don't want to be dealing with that, to be honest. I will, however, take, yeah, pulse grenades and plasma grenades. Grenades are fine under the right circumstances. Plasma rifle in decent condition. How's the Q35 doing right now? You know what? I'll take a little bit of an improvement. Massive waste of a plasma rifle there, but uh, what can you do? So, yeah, we're mainly taking on robots at the minute, but shouldn't be anything too dangerous. I see you over there. Unfortunately, 
you haven't seen me. Which really works for me. You're sort of just uh, hidden in the darkness. So I'll just be taking you down. Now where are the turrets? Right, there's a turret over there. So yeah, if I just actually use vats, I can line up the shot while I'm actually out of range, which is beautiful. There we go. They're taking damage. Yeah, you can use the old vats trick. Just use vats to make sure you're aiming at the right thing. And then you can just uh, take it out. Marvellous. Obviously doesn't work against moving enemies, but against a static turret works really, really darn nicely. Corners are really useful in this area, by the way. So you can just nip out, fire, and then just nip straight back in. So that's, uh, yeah. There's a lot of turrets just around corners, which is very bloody convenient. I think there might be two in the final room, which is going to be a little bit trickier. But I think I can use the stairs for, yeah, much the same purposes. So I can get myself, yeah, one shot. Unfortunately, Vats is a bit uh, heavy on this old thing. And it's also bugging out royally. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, if I just take my time, I can deal with this. I've got plenty of Radaway. We'll be fine. So, nice and simple. Plug that in. Absolutely lovely. 750 XP. And now I can walk out. Definitely worth doing because Caesar doesn't know the difference between you destroying and upgrading. So... Uh, Okay, it's probably time to get science to 15, just so I can do easy terminals with a programmer's digest. That's probably for the better. As for energy weapons, oh, 060. Well, that's just sexy. And a perk too. I wouldn't say no to adamantium skeleton, just because I'm taking, yeah, a lot of limb damage and I am playing in hardcore mode. So, uh, doctor's bags are not easy to come by. But I do think it's got to be Commando. Alright, the Q35 is serving me well and shall continue to do so. I know it's a bit low on ammo right this second, but bear in mind I did stash like 200 microfusion cells back at Easy Pete's house. So, that's that taken care of. Next up, Benny's fate. And I've decided I shall fight him 100% fairly in the arena. Though, I do have a little bit of an ace up my sleeve. The sort of thing that I suspect Benny would actually approve of. Machetes at 20 paces, hey? I accept your challenge. Aside from one small problem, which is companions are allowed to shoot into the arena. So, um, actually, I think you'll find this fair and square duel if I just... There we go. I've officially won arena combat. I see nothing wrong with this. <laughs> Whatsoever. <laughs> it was a completely fair duel. Completely 100%. Fair duel that I have just won. <laughs> Completely me there. Won 100%. I'll be having Maria, by the way. It's a fun gun. And actually, now I've got Benny's suit, I could get rid of the trader outfit. It does weigh one more, but it does look a lot more snazzy. So yeah, we'll just be dumping that. So that's all we need to do in the fort. In which case, time for me to pick up Arcade. <laughs> just to be clear, Arcade said you can't do anything that's going to hurt people. I lead him straight to the fort, do Kaisar's bidding, and then basically get him to shoot an unarmed man in the arena on my behalf. But he's still following me, bless him. So, next up is I now just need to get Arcade to like me enough, and there are a couple of very easy ways to get plenty of points with him. The first, and this one can be a little bit unreliable, is speaking to Dr. Hildern again. You need to speak to him for the very first time to get points with Veronica, but if we're lucky and the game doesn't bug out, we should be able to speak to him right now and get Arcade to make some comments. Hildern is a good example of big picture obsession gone too far. At some point, he became so fixated on large scale results that he lost the concept of the common good along the way. It's an inhumane kind of public service when people and the basic resources they need become numbers in a ledger. I love how Arcade's having this conversation very loudly at normal room volume when he's standing right next to Hildern. Yeah, I literally just walked up to him and said goodbye. He said goodbye. Arcade started the conversation. Marvellous. And naturally, we want to say good thing there are still people like you around, Arcade. Kind of you to say, but there are better people than me around here. I just hope the followers can make a difference in the long run. And that should be another two points. Really, really easy trust points. Basically, if you just flatter Arcade, he just accepts it without much in the way of question. Now, just to wrap things up, back to Freeside, and all we need to do is literally step inside the Silver Rush. That's a lot of energy weapons. Brings back some interesting memories. 
And there we flip in go. He wants to have a conversation about the energy weapons. I don't think you need to reply anything in particular here. I mean, you know, he'd probably respond better if he said, well, I'm sure you look very dashing holding an energy weapon because he does just seem to love the flattery. But uh, no, we can dig into his past a bit if we want. Energy weapons? Of course not. I mean, but we study all sorts of science and technology. So, you know, we... You just kind of get familiar with them. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's hiding something for now, obviously. And while I'm here, I could top up some pulse weaponry, because yeah, the special pulse and plasma variants of ammo you can very easily buy here. It's very difficult to get them elsewhere. Some shops, even like the big gun runners arsenal stall, just won't have them. So uh, absolutely, I'll be picking up some more pulse weaponry. And for absolute safety, bring him along to Repcon headquarters. He likes Repcon headquarters. I've read about Repcon. I think they did some work with the <clears throat> the government before the war. Rockets and some energy weapon prototypes, I think. You're not wrong. I've been using the Q35 a lot. It's great. Right, that should be plenty enough to get our Cade on side. Now we just need Yes Man in position. There we go. Change in management complete. Yes Man in place. And that should mean we now have everything we need to work with our Cade. I need to talk to you about something. If you have a minute. And here we flip and go. He's ready to kick off the quest. Any day now, Caesar's going to try to march across Hoover Dam and kick NCR out of the Mojave. We're getting caught up in something important out here. Hell, after how you handled Benny, you're practically right in the middle of all this. I know I'm just along for the ride, but it's made me think about the past and how I might be able to help out. I'm going to be honest, Arcade. I let Benny escape after trying to forgive him from the casino. And then, when we met again, you shot him while he was unarmed with a plasma pistol. I feel like this one's on you. And that means it's time to reunite the remnants. Most of these are very, very fast and easy indeed. We've already been to Miguel's pawn shop, of course, so Judah's sitting right outside. Number two, just up the road from the Sharecropper Farm, so obviously we've been here before. Number three's Daisy, back in Novak, another very, very easy to access individual. Also, after you speak to each of these people, Arcade will basically speak to you, and you'll have the option of basically saying, yeah, Enclave was awesome, pew pew pew, etc. Or, hey, maybe people should, like, move on and not be involved in pew pew pew. Go for the not pew 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 option. Now those three are the easy ones, the other two a little bit more on the complicated side. Cannibal Johnson's not too bad to get to, he's just a little bit out of the way, hiding in a cave you'd have no reason to go to otherwise. So uh, yeah, just watch out for golden geckos in this part of the world. Fortunately, with our cage and his plasma pistol, we should be A-OK, -okay. but hardcore mode. Make sure he doesn't get swarmed, because uh, if he does, he can straight up die, which would be very bad for the quest. Still, no geckos around today. We have been lucky. Watch out for the floor, though. There's traps. I have, uh, walked into them in the past. Yes, it's a very good chicken impression. Well done. Ah, yes, and that reminds me. Cannibal Johnson does have some unique dialogue for idiots, which is great. Well, it's about damn time. What took you... Oh. You see, he always assumes you're the Grim Reaper, come to finally collect him, but, uh... If you're a very low intelligence Grim Reaper... I've been in the Reaper's shadow for a long time now, and I thought he'd finally showed up to collect. He's just mocking me now. Which is very unfair, but what can you do? Last, of course, is Dr. Henry. He's, yeah, the most tricky one. You see, every single other member of the Remnants just basically sits around eating the pies, so when it comes to it, they've not actually got anything better to do. So they just sort of, you know, go to the reunion because they're bored, Dr. Henry, unfortunately, actually has a job, meaning he's not willing to leave it until he's managed to sort out this whole Nightkin stealth field business. Unfortunately, though, that's going to mean a trip to Charleston Cave and a whole bunch of invisible Night Stalkers. And Night Stalkers, they ain't fun, even if you're not useless, Steve. So, way up in the snow round the back of town, let's try and make this work. Me and you, Arcade, we got this. Okay, let's talk Night Stalkers. They're creatures, so they've got no damage threshold, and they should have about 120 hit points or thereabouts. So, okay. A double blast from Pew Pew should just about do the job. That'd be pretty good. The Q35 has got, yeah, 
the DPS, but can't really do much in terms of uh, damage. Service rifle, obviously, yeah, I should probably just get rid of that, to be honest. That's not doing the job anymore. Hollow point rounds would be best, but I've literally not got any of those, so what can you do, eh? You know what? DPS of 102 on the Q35, that's... That's pretty good. Let's try that out for now. I mean, bear in mind, all I actually need to do is get in and then get out again. So, uh, potentially, I might be able to just stealth boy my way in and... Okay, so, they're, they're, they're already here. They're already here. That's, that's fine. I've... Okay, um, so, I've been bitten and they've poisoned me badly. So, I'm about to start dying of... Okay, this, this hasn't worked. This hasn't... Yeah. Okay, um... Yes, possibly the stealth plan is a good plan. Let's just do one La Fantoma. Alright. And then one stealth boy, because I've literally got six of them. And... Uh, also, you know, it's just nice to see uh, my gun looking like this. This is all absolutely fine. Yen, yeah, that's of course, you can actually uh, see these guys, but you're not actually allowed to take a shot. So, uh, I know where I'm supposed to be going. Roughly, all caution. Okay, caution, not danger. That should be absolutely fine. Just need to uh, get down. And arguably, the fastest way would just be to do some skimming over. Oh, you're literally right there. Well, that doesn't work at all. Uh, drop down to here. Okay, straight across the center of the... Oh, or not, or, or not, or you. You, you're about to be a problem, aren't you? Yep, you're about to be a... Okay, this this hasn't worked at all. This is... Okay, yes. This this was always going to be somewhat difficult. You know what? Can't wait to see where this is. I've got all of these plasma mines right here. How about we just use one of them and... Okay, you're really, really getting in the way right now. All right, just use that to locate them. No one of you is in here. And go, 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 go. Okay, back off. Well, that's got one kill right there. Arcade, help me out here if you'd be so kind. And that second shot should be enough to get the kill. Okay, that's two down. Hit him. And if we're lucky, just enough to knock us into the next level two. Marvelous. And a speech of 60 would be good. Good, and uh, let's go for one more point of sneak. Beautiful. Okay, the big cavern. Oh. Unless there's another one behind us. Is there another one but No, arcade. Arcade, don't. Arcade, no. Arcade. Okay, arcade's got some stupid, stupid ideas in his head right now, and I don't approve in the on? slightest. Okay, don't. Never mind. Arcade has, arcade has had some stupid ideas. This is fine. We're going to take you out, and your friends aren't going to know where we are, right? That's going to be... A... No, Arcade. Arcade, please. Come on, Arcade. This is... Arcade, this isn't cool. What you're doing right now is not... Okay, so they're going to start just rushing the corridor right now. That's that's great. I really... No, okay. Arcade, seriously. We need we need them to go down, and Arcade needs to... Arcade needs to not die, because because he could die at this point, and he's taking... I mean, he's been useful as a little kind of, you know, not me being killed buffer for the moment, but I'm a bit... Oh, that missed somehow. Okay, critical. Maybe I should have stayed back in NCR after all. Yeah, he's, he's not sounding great, to be honest. Arcade, are you okay, man? You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some, uh, I'm gonna give you some health, actually. How about we just, yeah, stim pack you. There we go. Hang on, will you... Okay, actually, I think you just fully loaded up to full health there, because we were out of combat. Great. Now, I see one over there. Or rather, I don't, but you know. You know what I mean. And then we got one who's now running... Okay, I totally missed him, but he's now going to be coming up here in a moment. Oh, he's going to be coming for me, though, which is not good. Wait for him to come around the corner. Okay, and go. We got a few good hits on him. Take him out in the head. And if we're lucky, that'll be... Ow, we got a hit in. No, 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 no. Sure, oh, bloody hell, that was the poison, I'm guessing. Okay, same tactics again. Worked a little better this time, which is good. 
Very, very good indeed. We're able to uh, funnel them. They kind of got stuck on each other there, which is good. So, okay. This is fine. I don't know whether we're looking at any more. This room is uh, clear. So now we just need to go. It's one room further over. Just one more. We get what we need. The chewed stealth boy. And then we go. We got... Oh, we got more. Yeah, we definitely got more. Okay, and back off. Back off. Arcade's providing some useful backup fire here. And one more. Okay, uh, Arcade, just take it out. And oh, a rare critical strike there. And then a miss. Keep firing. Down it goes. Oh, no, 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 no. Hang on. Need to... Okay. Can't spam stim packs, but I can try. Uh, last one. Down it goes. And is my healing counteracting the poison? Just about. Okay, or maybe not poison. I swear these guys do poison, but I don't seem to be. Uh, don't seem to be dying of poison just this second. You know what? Just gonna do. Oh bloody hell! I really need to go and visit a doctor. My limbs are in awful, awful condition right now. Everything's fine. It's all under control. We good? I think we're good. Right, okay. So, there is also somewhere around here. Oh, baby. Don't actually need oh, baby. But, you know, nice to pick it up while I'm here. When I say it's nice to pick it up, it weighs 20. It's, it's a lot. That's an awful lot. But, I would like to sell it if I could. There we go. Chewed stealth boy. Okay, let's get the flip out of dodge. You know, thinking about it, given my limbs are in such terrible condition, I probably should have asked, you know, Dr. Henry to heal me, given he's literally a doctor. So, hand Stealth Boy over to him, summon Lily in for the experiment, and the experiment is underway. Important thing to do during the experiment, however, I need to put on some lovely pajamas. We're gonna be needing them in a second. Oh, I just look fabulous. Okay, experiment's almost done. My speech is at 71 right now, so that's not quite good enough. So sadly, yeah, I'm burning through my meeting people a little fast right now, but I do not want to engage in the fight I would have to otherwise. And there we go. Here comes Keen. Hi there, Keen. Yeah, three night kin. Not a joke. But with speech of 80, you can just naff off, mate. And away he goes. Beautiful. And as for further testing, yeah, with science of 90, I can just solve the riddle immediately. But alternatively, yeah, I can tell him either Lily should do more tests or no more tests. Now, weirdly, if you tell him to do more tests with Lily, there is no negative side whatsoever. It doesn't negatively affect Lily's ending or the town's ending. In fact, if you can't do the science check, it improves the town's ending in the ending slides. But there's no negative on Lily. So, you know what? Just keep doing the tests. And that is the end of Guess Who I Saw Today, and that means you're gonna come and join the reunion. So, we're now ready to go to the bunker, but before we do, I'm gonna need a little something else to uh, help out with that, because the bunker's got one a hell of a fight in it if you don't want to talk down the Enclave, and uh, on this occasion, because I always talk them down, I would like to take care of it with violence, but uh, to do that, I'm gonna be needing a new toy. You see, our Enclave friends are gonna be wearing advanced power armor, which means I need to take a trip to Mick and Ralph's. Because hidden inside Mick's special inventory, you're guaranteed to get something very good indeed. One grenade machine gun, and it doesn't even cost that much. Admittedly, I don't even remotely meet the requirements for it, explosive or strength-wise, but it's gonna be rather useful for me regardless. Here we go, damage of 24, DPS of 71, needs 100 explosives and 8 strength. So, that doesn't work for me. Normal grenades in this thing would be garbage, but while I was in the Silver Rush earlier, I picked up a little something while I was grabbing some more, yeah, pulse grenades for my grenade rifle. I also grabbed some pulse grenades that fit inside this thing, meaning I can now fire in rapid succession 11 pulse grenades in a single pull of the trigger, which is just absolutely flipping beautiful, because that's, uh, 
that's going to be a lot of damage. Because the fun thing about pulse weaponry is, it does basically no damage with the actual hit, but a flat amount of damage on top of it. Now, I think there's a guy around the corner. I'm just going to leave that up to uh, Arcade, all right? I'm not using up my special pulse grenades. Many because they do literally nothing to you because you're not a robot. So, uh, yeah. Pulse grenades do flat damage. It doesn't matter what your skill is, you get the full effect. So, uh, against someone wearing power armor, that's going to be rather dramatic. In a perfect world, I would actually rather be using the pulse gun, but uh, to get the pulse gun, I need to go to Vault 34. Useless Steve would not do well in Vault 34. So, just down the road to the Remnant's Bunker, another good reason to do Dr. Henry last... Enter the password, dear old friends, remember Navarro, which is the worst password, because in many cases, if you had four parts of it, you could just guess the fifth. Like, you know, old friends, remember Navarro, you'd try dear pretty fast. Dear something friends, remember Navarro, you'd try old pretty fast. Dear old something, remember Navarro, friends would come up possibly the first word you'd try. Dear old friends, something Navarro, remembers a logical place. Navarro, okay, fine, you couldn't guess that one. All the other words are easily guessable. Oh, look at that advanced power armor, flipping love it. And a big enclave vertebrate too, it's just so lovely to see. Just because, you know, there's barely any vertebrates in this game, so when they do show up, it's truly special. Also, I can't remember precisely where he's going to be standing, but it's going to be somewhere over here-ish, and I do have this here pulse mine. I'm just going to pop it down about here, and we'll see if that works out for me. But other than that, yeah. Let's get out the big guns. Very literally. So, got you all together. Congratulations. I lied to you. We're actually going to be fighting for the NCR. We're going to have a problem with Moreno, though. He won't like that we're helping the NCR. You'll have to talk to him. Yeah, when you say, um, talk. All right, Arcade. Me and you, let's make it happen. I didn't come all the way out here just so we could save the fucking NCR. I'm out. Okay, you're not standing where I was hoping you'd be standing. So, uh, unfortunately, yeah, we're gonna have to take you on. I might be able to get behind the vertebird, uh, and then I just need to start opening fire. I've no idea how much damage I'm gonna do. It's gonna be about 40 damage per grenade. You are guaranteed to be level 30 with 100 and all your weapon skills, so you're going to be doing a lot of damage to me. You should have about 350 hit points, so hopefully this will work. Once I'm done with you, I'll talk them out of this stupid plan. You've opened some old wounds. It's only fair I return the favor. Okay, this is fine. Come and get me. You're going to kill me. I'm going to die now, but we'll see how this goes. And boom, 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 boom. That did less damage than I thought it was going to, to be perfectly honest. Right, grenade rifle, go over to pulse grenade, uh, use this for cover, and no you don't. Oh, I think Arcade's... Okay, Arcade just died! Um, I should probably leave him, um, alone inside the, uh, inside the room. I don't feel like this is his fight. I will, however, shove literally every drug going in my face. John, why did you just do Psycho? You literally just said out loud, it's flat damage. Psycho doesn't affect the bonus damage off Pulse. Buff out, however, that will help. Okay, fire, 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 fire. Did you just come through the door? Arcade, I, I literally tried to leave you behind. What are you doing? Okay, put in the Pulse rounds. Uh, the Pulse rounds are pretty good. He's... He's not doing anything for some reason. And he's... No, don't. Don't flip it. Oh, he's trying to heal. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to heal. Okay. The problem is... Arcade is... Arcade's dying too fast for me to stop him. I'm gonna try a pulse grenade. That's got a lot of damage on it. So we'll see how that does. Okay, so he prepares his weapon. I'm gonna toss two pulse grenades in a row. And you're just determined to come along. That should do... That is nowhere near as much damage as I was hoping for. I mean, it's not bad, but I feel like we could... Ow, I'm being very shot. I mean, hopefully he's going to go for me. Go for the grenade machine gun. Try the pulse and... Okay, now I'm taking a lot of... I'm taking a lot of damage. He's trying to... He's trying to heal right up. Everything is crippled. Okay, just put everything on him. That will hopefully make him... Oh, I need to fall back and heal for a second. We're 
both screwed. Just get as much healing going. God, this is ridiculous. I love this guy. This guy is a great opponent. Um, right, get over here. Just, just hold on for one second. Okay, just hold on for a second. Okay, just one second. And he's... Damn it! Okay, plan number two. What if he just didn't have a gun anymore? What if he just didn't have that? We're just going to see if we can just take out the gun, knock it out of his hands, do what we can there. That's not really working. There we go. That's what I wanted. I'll be having that. Thank you. Right. So, 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 so. I think we'll find now you don't have a gun anymore, which is precisely what I want to see. So now, yeah, that's, that was the solution. He just picked something up. What did you just pick up? Right, that's fine. Go over to Grenade Rifle. <laughs> Go over to Pulse. Everything's okay. Now he's... I'm starting to feel bad for him. I'm gonna be honest, Arcade. I'm starting to feel guilty. At this point, we're just... We're just shooting him. And one last Pulse Grenade! Down he goes. <laughs> okay, job done. Very sorry about that. Okay, I'm still very badly wounded, but mostly, you know, I'm fine. And this guy is very dead. He had he had a shotgun and ammo for it. I don't know why he didn't use it, but he just sort of didn't. And also, explorer's gear. Okay, fair enough. I guess that's what he was wearing before. And there's the actual healing items he didn't bother using on this occasion. Marvelous. So, power armor training from those guys. They're all on side. This guy's got some armor I could use, but... Uh, that's not really the armor I'm after. No, 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 no. So, uh, Arcade ran off, said he had something to do. But, uh, as I've actually already spent a few hours with that training... Like I said, I needed to go do something. This is it. It belonged to my father. I thought I might wear it at Hoover Dam, but after you talked me out of it, I didn't see the point in hanging on to it any longer. I'm here because of you, so I figured you're the one most deserving of it. It should protect you from everything short of a plasma caster. And if you need anything, anything at all, you know where to find me. I've no idea why Arcade likes me under the circumstances, but he does so great. Ganon family Tesla armor, 26 damage threshold, which is really, really damn nice. And it is medium armor, which is really damn cool as well. The only medium power armor in the game, I believe. All the rest of it is heavy. So it's a little bit better for being stealthy. Not desperately relevant to me. And yes, obviously, uh, the combat armor can go now. And I do have the actual helmet as well, but honestly... It's not so great. Charisma minus one is actually kind of useless to me. The threshold's fine. You know what? I will hold on to it. I may use it down the line. But for the most part, obviously, I should keep on wearing <laughs> Easy Pete's hat. That's, uh, that's a hell of a look right there. Also, now I'm just curious. Can I actually use this stuff to improve my armor? Yes, actually, I can. Hugely, in fact. Marvelous. Not the helmet, though. For some reason, they're too different. Well, I tell you what, that's a good amount of stuff. And, oh, look at that. Blue lights and green lights and yellow lights. Oh, I am lit up like Christmas. It's beautiful. Right, let's get to a shop before the buff out wears off. There we go. Got the fast travel off. Marvelous. Because now I don't need the Gatling laser he had. I don't need the grenade machine gun anymore. Is there anything else I need to get rid of? I'll keep the grenade rifle. It's light. And, yeah, those pulse grenades are really, really damn nice. Pew Pew is Great. A handful of pulse grenades never hurt. So that might be slightly too many frag mines, to be honest, just in terms of uh, weight. Probably time for the service rifle to go, uh, together with associated ammunition. I have not used that for a long time. Though, weirdly, it might have actually worked pretty well in that fight, because I do have armor-piercing rounds for it. So it might have actually been okay. And with that, I would say Useless Steve is starting to look pretty darn swish, all things considered. Covered in green lights, blue lights, yellow lights. Oh, he looks fabulous. Right. We are now kitted out pretty darn well in terms of weapons, armor, all the rest of it. So, I would say that's enough for now. But, next week, we're going to be diving into some more very, very difficult quests indeed. And, uh, I've also got a plan to, uh mix things up a bit. So, uh, yeah, useless Steve's life might be about to get 
even more flipping tricky. I shall elaborate next time. Hopefully, you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been Many a True Nerd. And this has been Fallout New Vegas with The Worst Courier. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got a... I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out... Die, you moving bastards! Die! Die! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.